No Dalton Schultz for the Texans today at practice. Dalton Schultz misses his second straight practice. What does it mean? Plus an interesting observation uh, that I noticed about Schultz uh, as open practice was going on. We'll get to that in a sec. We'll also hear from two out of the three coordinators, uh, as well as a member of the uh, the defense that had a pretty good debut in Indianapolis. It is the locker room number one source for Texans digital content. I'm Landry Locker. You can see me right here. I'm always in the mix. Uh, big announcement on Monday, Reaction Monday, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Central, uh, with the other best guy on the digital P uh, beat, Cody Stutes. S and L Reaction Monday. We got a big announcement. For you then, night stream every night at 10 a.m. Be sure to subscribe, thumbs up, uh, and uh, ride along for the best Texans coverage in the country. The big news, though, right now, Dalton Schultz not practicing. Uh, we've heard Bobby Slowick say he's kind of the, uh, the guy that makes this thing click. Uh, we've seen C.J. Stroud trust Schultz in big key situations. Um, and, and we've seen uh, Dalton Schultz uh, perform at a high level in some really big games for this Texans Squad, what would it mean if Dalton Schultz isn't on the field? It could mean more Cade Stover. It'll mean more Brevin Jordan. Uh, can can either one of those guys fill the void? I think Stover's probably a little bit better of a blocker. Brevin Jordan, don't even know if he's as good of a blocker uh, as uh, Dalton Schultz. And does that kind of prevent you from using Brevin Jordan uh, in the creative ways that they like to use him? Also could mean a little bit more British Brooks. Do we see British Brooks more? Uh, lead blocking. Uh, do we see British Brooks even lining up at tight end? I've seen him go out for a few passes. He's he's participating with the tight ends in practice. Who knows? Uh, but Dalton Schultz, um, not ideal uh, for the Texans to be without him. We saw the Texans without him a couple of times last year. Uh, there was the Jets game, which was a total disaster where Nico Collins left in the first quarter. Tank Dell got, had a season-ending injury the week before. Um, and you, you really never really had a chance. So you, I wouldn't put too much stock in that one. But then you saw him miss the uh, the Denver game the previous week where the Texans found a way to win. CJ's QBR was over uh, 100. Uh, the tight end's not really going to be asked to produce as much in the receiving game, but there are elements where they open stuff up. Uh, they're going to be asked to block, uh, and you, you would like to have all hands on deck. The one thing I will say, and the one observation that I noticed before we get to the uh, – the coordinators and my questions for them and, and, and what uh, Mario Edwards had to say about his Texans debut, perhaps some controversy involving the Indianapolis um, Colts. The one thing I will say is Dalton Schultz does not look like a guy that you can just completely say isn't going to play. Uh, he appears to be moving okay. He's walking fine. Saw him on the side. Uh, he was uh, pretty attentive. Uh, he, I saw him talking to both coaches, uh, his, his position coach, as well as offensive coordinator Bobby Slowick. Uh, so I wouldn't completely dismiss Dalton Schultz uh, as a, as potentially playing, but the Friday injury report will tell the story. If he doesn't practice tomorrow, then there's a 99.9% .9 chance he doesn't play. Uh, so that's the big question right now from a Texans point of view. They got their own situation in Chicago uh, it, it, with their receiving core, but that's the big question uh, when it comes to the Texans. Will Dalton Schultz play or not, and how big of a deal is that you're going to have to overcome injuries. This is really just the first example of 2024 of the Texans having to do that. Matt Burt, defensive coordinator for the Texans. D'Amico Ryan's right-hand man. He's got to prepare for Caleb Williams, uh, one of the most uh, hyped-up rookie quarterbacks in some time. I think he's going to be a really, really good player. Not the best start to his career in Tennessee, which led me to wondering, uh, does that make it a little bit more difficult? It's already uh, a small sample size of trying to prepare for Caleb Williams. Do you watch USC tape? When a guy struggles in his debut, does that lead to any extra challenges of trying to figure out his tendencies? Here's what uh, Texans defensive coordinator Matt Burke had to say about that when I asked him. Is there any like extra challenge, given the fact that you have a one-game sample size of Caleb and the, the offense really didn't move the ball and you don't have much else to go off of? Does that add like any extra challenges? Do you go back and watch him at SC? Do you just try to... Do yeah, I mean, I would say this, like there's always just even last week, there's always elements of unknown early in the season. Um, you know, Richardson didn't have a, a, a long history of film for us in the league and stuff. And, you know, I would say with Coach Waldron, like and as a coordinator has like gone against this front a bunch and, and obviously with D'Amico and the Seattle San Fran and, you know, when I was in Arizona and stuff. So there's it, you know, you try to go back schematically and see what what they liked against this front um, or how they attack this defense, this coverage package. So. 
Um, you know, those are just trying to glean nuggets. And again, I, I think mm-hmm. not to be super cliche, but at the end of the day, it comes back to us. Like we feel if we don't put ourselves in some of those bad positions and, and some of the coverage communications, or we don't, if we play our defense and play the style we want to play and, and put ourselves in the spots that we're supposed to be in, then we can handle whatever the unknowns are. Cause there's always going to be unknowns. Like they can run whatever they want, right? We can look at college tape. We can look at Seattle Seahawks tape and, and anything else that's going on Chicago last year, Tate, whatever it is, and, and they can do whatever they want. So, you know, the focus is on us making sure that we're tight in what we're trying to do and not, not giving anything for free. So, so it's, just, it's as much about looking at the tendencies of the coordinators, maybe with Caleb Williams, the off script stuff though, a lot of times you just can't prepare for it. You just got to be, um, I guess you got to be prepared, but it's not like any like tape study uh, type of thing. That's more so an on-field type of uh, thing. But that was Matt Burke on that. So we've talked about the Texans offense, how they're going to handle uh, potentially not having Dalton Schultz. Uh, we talked about the defense, how they're going to handle Caleb Williams and, and, the, and the small sample size uh, of NFL reps in tape. What about special teams? Frank Ross, uh, he was asked about the block punt. Uh, he was very, very, I don't want to say embarrassed, but he he said that they got to clean that up and there was no excuse for it. Kind of reading between the lines, seems like it might have been a British Brooks thing because he said, you know, it's the first time you're doing it. Uh, maybe that's me reading between the lines a lot, but that's that's what I read from Frank Ross. Also read from week one in the NFL that this, this uh, attempt by the NFL to maybe revive the kickoff it might actually kill the kickoff. And there was talk before about killing the kickoff, and now this was a revival. I asked Frank Ross about that. This is what the Texan special teams coach had to say uh, at practice today. More people are just kicking it out of the end zone because it's at the 30. Like, what do you think uh, the risk-reward of that decision is? Yeah, um, yeah, try not to think about it as, you know, as risk. We try to go out there and play aggressive. Um, and I don't. I truly do not like that part of the game I wish we had you know, returns or coverage every single time. Um, I think that was the goal. And because there was a time where we were saying they're killing the kickoff and then it was like they're bringing it back. And now it just seems like a lot of teams are just kicking out of the end zone even more now. Yep. Yep. Everybody to their own, you know, they can do it however they want to do it. Um, I think that, you know, when it matters, you better be ready to have coverage ready instead of just kicking the ball out. So, you know, everybody, again, they, they can do whatever flavors up for them. Um, let's say you don't cover any kicks throughout the entirety of the season, and then week 12 you're in Buffalo, you know, and you have to cover. So are you ready to do that? And, you know, that maybe that's part of the formula for some teams. Um, I don't know if it's killing the kickoff or not. I just think that, um, you know, I think the goal is it for it to be a good play, a safe play, and a play that either has a chance or we just don't want stalemates. And across the league we don't want that. So, um, we'll, you know, continue to evaluate it as it goes either way Landry just to your question either way man just try and make a difference so like can we get the ball out you know get that ball to midfield and really spark something so if it's not able to do that in the end yeah I understand why getting rid of the risk makes sense and just touching it back oh, there you go he doesn't sound too happy about that he wants to kick off alive it looks like it could be dying though uh which not the worst thing in the world I want Fairbairn and kicking uh field goals and, and not worrying about covering kicks uh, if I am the Texans. So that's offense, defense, special teams, all three phases. Again, the big news, Dalton Schultz misses a second straight practice. This is the locker room uh, practice report here on YouTube, uh, straight off of the practice field for you, the people. Night streams at 1030. We'll get into Bobby Slowick. Uh, we'll also get into what some uh, some other key members of the Texans uh, had to say, as well as uh, some stuff to watch coming out of Chicago when it comes to Caleb Williams. But let's hear from a guy that's going to try to bring Caleb Williams down. Uh, Mario Edwards Jr. Makes me feel old as hell. I remember his father uh, very, very well. Uh, Mario Edwards Jr. with a sack in his Texans debut. Now, there were some Colts uh, fans in the stands that were begging for a penalty. There's talk on the internet that maybe the Colts are going to send that sack into the league. I think you should maintain some dignity uh, when you're cheering for your squad. I, I think that's a little bit of a weird uh request a little bit soft i don't want to call it the wussification of the football fans just an interesting thing from the Colts. but here's what mario edwards had to say about that uh making his debut in front of houston fans uh and what he needs to improve moving forward this was mario edwards in the locker room after practice today with your boy able to uh you talked about your camp you said it was the best camp you've had you were able to kind of show it on the field uh, how did how did you feel 
after your uh, first game as a Texan? And is there any improvements that, that you feel you need to make? Uh, well, we all we wasn't doing our uh, – we're not even our best uh, yet. We're still uh, kind of ironing out some wrinkles and things like that. But once we're able to communicate and play all on the same page, we'll be good. And I feel like there's a lot more to improve uh, as the weeks come on. Kind of seemed like they were begging for a flag uh, in the stands on the uh, on the sack. And then I've, I've, I've seen on social media maybe it's like something they're maybe sending to the league. Did you feel like there was – any penalty there? Uh, I just going to come do what I said I'm going to do when I got here, man. Play fast, physical to the echo of the whistle um, and try to play a dominant physical game. And that's all I was trying to do Sunday. What differences and similarities do you see between uh, Caleb Williams and, uh, and uh, Richardson? Uh, size is the one big thing, but they both are able to extend plays with their legs. And they're both dangerous when they're able to extend plays and throw it downfield. So um, they're both dual threats, and we just have to put a lot of pressure on them. Is it difficult watching a guy struggle, and that's really the only sample size you have uh, on Caleb Williams? Like, has the film study been a little bit difficult? Or do you go back to SC? Um, How do you do that? I mean, like I said, we got guys that came in pro ready, like Will last year. Um, even though he's a rookie, we're not going to, you know, uh, try to play down to that level or play because he's a rookie. He's in a professional NFL, and uh, we got to treat him as such. Sunday night football, uh, does that add a little extra juice? <laughs> Absolutely, man. Sunday night, primetime game. Everybody is home watching. So we definitely have to do something for H-Town and give them something to watch. Appreciate you, man. Uh, there you go. That was fun. Uh, it's going to be a fun, fun Sunday, and it was a fun day of practice. Dalton Schultz, keep an eye on him. Uh, we'll have the practice report uh, tomorrow uh, available on the short immediately after practice. I'll give you the update on what's going on. Uh, we'll also have videos of breaking news throughout and the day, the nightly 1030 stream post game show right after the game. Uh, and we're going to have Reaction Monday with S. Sandell, myself, and Cody Stutes, 8 to 10 a.m. live. we got a big announcement for you. We've been doing this for two years now. Uh, we got about 1,100 videos uh, on top of uh, all of the uh, the radio success uh, and uh, hosting uh, the top radio product in town as well. So it's just beginning. The digital game is increasing. And when it comes to this text and stuff, we're all in it together. Thanks for coming by the locker room. Hey. Locker room, yeah, we in the locker room. Texas talk, yeah, you know what we about to do. Localize every angle is what we really do. We the source, we the post of the city too. Landlock, got the game in the headlock.